Good. Well, hi, everyone. We're so happy to have you here today for RISD 101. Uh, my name is Emily Drennan. I'm an admissions officer here with the Rhode Island School of Design, and I'm also a regional representative for a number of uh, beautiful states across the country, uh, some of which I saw are represented here today, so I'm so happy um, that you all are here. And I will be um, doing the presentation today, and my wonderful friend and colleague Marin will also be helping out. Uh, my name is Marin Brennan. <laughs> And um, and I <laughs> I am excited to be here today. I work in admissions. I also went to RISD as a student, um, and so I'm excited for you to all learn about RISD. And I'm going to act as a chat manager in the background. So as Emily is giving this fantastic presentation, I will be attending to any questions that you all may have. Please also be, uh, keep in mind the presentation has a lot of great information. So we certainly want to see any questions that you have. Um, and make sure to enter them, not in the chat box where you told us where you're tuning in from, but the Q&A chat box, which is a few icons to the right. But also keep in mind that some of your questions may be answered within the presentation. So perhaps maybe hold them till um, it till gets a little further along. Uh, but, but again, either way, I will be uh, also entering in some links into the regular chat box for you. Um, but yeah, I'm going to turn off my camera, but I will reappear and we'll have a Q&A session after the presentation. All right. All right. Sounds good. We will get started then. Welcome to RISD 101. You're likely here because you're a creative person. Maybe you're one of a few kids who was really into art in your high school, or maybe you go to an arts magnet school. You might like to draw or build websites or make things with your hands, and you're wondering how your creativity will fit into your future. At the same time, the future probably feels like a big question mark. Maybe you also want to study math or a foreign language, but aren't sure how to connect those interests to your creative talents. Maybe you want to tackle a big problem like climate change, but aren't sure where to start. The questions on your mind, both big and small, are best answered with unexpected ideas and new approaches. This is the work of artists and designers. RISD itself began as an unexpected idea in Providence, Rhode Island in 1877. At that time, Rhode Island was home to major textile mills and jewelry producers. It was a hub of the Industrial Revolution. A group of women, the Rhode Island Women Centennial Commission, were inspired by the creativity in their state. They had a budget surplus and wanted to use their extra money to make an impact. One idea was to build a public fountain in Providence. Another idea posed by member Helen Metcalf was to start a school of art and design to build Rhode Island's creative talent. I think we're all very happy they went with that option. They voted for the school and Rhode Island School of Design was born. Fast forward to present day, RISD enrolls roughly 2,600 full-time students, 2,100 are undergraduate and 500 are graduate. Its curriculum now includes 16 undergraduate majors in fine art and design. Majors include apparel, architecture, ceramics, film, animation, and video, furniture design, glass, graphic design, illustration, industrial design, interior architecture, jewelry and metalsmithing, painting, photography, printmaking, and sculpture and textiles. This is actually the last one. We now have a global network of 31,000 plus alumni. They include 10 winners of the MacArthur Genius Award, the highest national honor for creative thought. One is Tavares Streitgen, a multimedia artist whose work engages with science and history and often reframes overlooked accomplishments of marginalized figures. Here, he recreates the 1909 discovery of the North Pole. Most frequently attributed to white explorer Robert Perry, the feat was also shared by the black explorer Matthew Henson. Oop. Also by Straken, this traveling installation shown here on a barge on the Mississippi River challenges concepts of citizenship, history, and culture, creation depending on its setting. Native American sculptor and 2011 MFA graduate Rose B. Simpson has been featured in the New York Times for work that builds upon the pottery tradition established by members of her community, the Santa Clara Pueblo. This is some of her most recent work, a large scale installation called Counterculture at a field farm in Williamstown, Massachusetts. These 12 cast concrete figures honor generations of marginalized people and cultures whose voices have been silenced by colonization. And here's Gracie Zhang, 2016 illustration graduate. She's an award-winning author and illustrator. In addition to her books, she creates editorial illustrations for publications like the New York Times. 
Here uh, are some illustrations she did for the World Cup for uh, the, de the design publication, It's Nice That. It's the Women's World Cup, some of my favorite work. Her illustrations are recognized for their sensitive approach to personal subjects like body sensitivity, as seen in the book, The Big Bath House. She illustrates subjects from all different backgrounds and walks of life. And she designed this year's admissions poster for RISD. The nighttime scene shows all the creative energy that fills the Waterman building where first year students have many of their classes. Working across time periods, technologies and issues of political and cultural significance from Pulitzer Prize to Oscar winners, the founders of Airbnb to the creator of Barack Obama's campaign posters. RISD alumni have a long legacy of making an impact by questioning the status quo and creating solutions. But how do you get from being a creative person to making an impact in the world? At RISD, it starts with how you learn. Learning at RISD is split across studio courses and liberal arts courses. By developing your creative problem solving skills alongside your studies in art and design, histories, and the social sciences, you'll be prepared to participate in contemporary culture. The, stud the studio side of the first year program is experimental and foundation studies, but here at RISD we call it EFS. You'll take classes in drawing, spatial dynamics, and design. This drawing machine was actually made in a design studio. Students were asked to build a machine capable of making its own works of arts and then documenting its process by video. In EFS, you'll be pushed beyond your comfort zone. Instructor Paula Gaetano Adi surprises students on day one of her design studio by giving everyone a manual of 50 assignments, all in Spanish. The project series is called Se Habla Español. The assignments are both experience-based and process-based, from volunteering for a social cause to documenting patterns of light. The fast pace means you have to manage both time and creative approaches. She asks students to take risks to better understand themselves as learners, makers, and citizens, and see themselves as active participants in their education. Ultimately, this approach to teaching and learning is about connecting your curiosity about the way you create to your curiosity around, about the world around you. This will be the through line of your education at RISD. Here's some work from the class on display at an EFS exhibition on campus. Since all first years began in EFS, you won't actually declare major until your sophomore year. So beyond asking yourself why you want to be an artist and designer, you will also start to investigate what you wanna focus on while at RISD. Maybe you've never considered textile design or want to know what interior architecture courses are like. This year is for you to discover new disciplines and try new ways of working. It's also a time to build community and get inspired by classmates. This happens in the studio as you work on assignments side by side. And it happens through group projects. Here you can see a group of students in a drawing class presenting a collaborative performance. You'll also grow through the feedback you get from your classmates and your teachers. You're looking at a critique session in progress. Critique is when the class gathers at the end of a project to consider and discuss everyone's work. The conversation will help you see what you've made from new perspectives. Critique is not about judging whether work is good or bad. Your work may have turned out great or it may have failed to meet an assignment's expectations in some ways. Even a tough critique is a moment of opportunity. Talking through your process helps you better consider the steps that lead to your final piece. You'll notice progress as you've made you've made in your creative problem solving along the way and begin to see new directions to take in studio. Your creative and critical thinking will also expand through study in our three liberal arts departments listed here. You'll take introductions to each in your first year and then choose a liberal arts course that appeal to you over the next three. Recent courses include Aliens in Sci-Fi, Borderlands, Latinx, and Chinese Archaeology. Liberal arts can turn into an in-depth complement to your major if you pursue a concentration, which are like minors at other schools. You can also build an interdisciplinary concentration in nature, culture, sustainability studies, computation, technology, and culture, or drawing. Here's recent sculpture grad, Florida native and nature obsessive Lee Pivnik. His nature, culture, sustainability studies concentration was a catalyst for his current work as an environmental artist. As an undergrad, Lee made images and sculptures informed by his liberal arts research in environmental humanities. 
After graduation, he started the Institute of Queer Ecology, which has been awarded grants by the, now the Knight Foundation and has partnered with the Guggenheim Museum and ICA Miami. You can see members of the team, many of whom are RISD alumni here. Through films, events, and installations, their mission is to make space for collectively imagining an equitable multi-species future. All right, now let's take a look at the places where students learn at RISD. You'll learn and work in shops and studio spaces across campus, which look different depending on your major. Just got a few images here of different studios across campus. And this is one of the EFS studios. They're full of specialized tools and equipment as well. So you see a student working on a stop motion animation here. And our furniture department, for example, maintains a full wood studio and metal shop. Nearby, you'll find a department laser cutter, rapid prototype machine, and CNC router, among many other tools. Here's another example from the textiles department. Our uh, Jacquard loom, which uses uh, CAD, computer-aided design software, to create complex weave structures. And this photo is very funny because the person's actually standing in front of a line that says, please stand below the line. <laughs> Interdisciplinary research spaces on campus help you learn and generate new ideas too, like the Nature Lab. Founded in 1937 by Edna Lawrence, the Nature Lab is central to RISD's focus on sustainability and the ways art and design connect to living systems. It houses a natural history collection and tools for research. Through a major award from the National Science Foundation, it has expanded to include a biodesign marketplace or market makerspace, <laughs> a makerspace. RISD is the only art and design school in the US to receive funding through the NSF. In a research collaboration sponsored by the Korean auto company, Hyundai, student teams focus on scientifically informed design practices. One drew inspiration from cockroach exoskeletons found in the nature lab to serve as a basis of design for customizable mobile shelters. Here's a CAD model of their design. The RISD Museum is located in the heart of campus, and this is the grand gallery of the museum. Exhibitions, events, and internships at the museum give students something that they can't be found at other institutions. The opportunity to engage with a renowned art collection for research, curatorial experience, activism, community, and more. In the Fleet Library, a beautifully remodeled turn of the century former bake in downtown Providence, you have access to a huge collection of books and materials on art, design, architecture, and more. The library also houses a picture collection and a materials resource center. The Center for Arts and Language is housed in the same building as the library and provides support to students on all things communication, art, and design. Whether you're writing a paper or preparing a presentation, the tutors here will help you think, think through what you want to say. At other facilities like the Color Lab, CoWorks, and the Spatial Audio Studio, which you see here, students experiment with new technologies, share skills, and explore materials. Finally, one of our most important resources for learning and collaboration exists right across the street, Brown University. RISD and Brown University share neighboring campuses and students can cross register in classes at either location. RISD students also have access to Brown's extensive libraries and facilities. Motivated students can apply to our Brown RISD dual degree program, which allows students to earn degrees from Brown and RISD simultaneously. The program offers a rigorous course of study for students to mix diverse areas of academic work. If you're more curious about this program, you're welcome to ask questions in the Q&A section of this, uh, this webinar today. And I also wanna point you towards the fact that we have a few recordings from specific presentations about the Brown RISD dual degree program. All right, let's talk about life on campus. RISD is in school all the time. We have a lot of really fun events throughout the year, including RISD Craft, which is an event that happens uh, a couple times a year where students and alumni uh, have the opportunity to sell their work on one of our beautiful streets here on campus. Students have a lot of interest coming into our community and we have over 60 clubs and organizations to participate in, like our gardening club known as the Regenerative Earth Collective. They're focused on fostering environmentally responsible creative practice. 
and our cycling team and the Space Design Club, whose members traveled to Houston last year to test prototypes with NASA designers and astronauts. And the Brown RISD Jendo Taiko, one of the first collegiate Japanese drumming groups in the country. There are many more cultural clubs and organizations available for students to join while on campus, including Black artists and designers, Brown RISD Hong Kong Student Association, Chinese Student and Scholar Association, Korean Student Association, Mango Street Club for Latinx Students and Allies, Queer Student, Stu Queer Student Association, RISD South Asian Students Association, and many more. Additionally, students are more than welcome to join one of, one of many Brown universities, clubs, and organizations, or create their own while at RISD. You can find more information on our website at involve.risd.edu. Traditions like the Artist Ball are also highlights of the year. This happens around Halloween every year. So is the spring long party where AstroTurf is rolled out on the street that connects RISD and Brown. Openings, gallery openings take place weekly across campus galleries. There's a gallery in almost every academic building here on campus. To speak a bit more about the feel of campus, RISD is green but urban, and campus is compact and central enough that you don't have to travel too far to reach any of the, the many key buildings. And between our undergraduate and grad population and Brown Next Door, there's a lot of student activity around College Hill. There's often action between the museum and the library in Market Square, from student sales to pop-up installations to practicing skateboarders. And on nice days, you'll always find students lounging between class on a lawn that's become known as RISD Beach. It's right in the middle of campus. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the city that we call home. Providence is called the creative capital of Rhode Island. It's known for its excellence in art and education. Located between Boston and New York City, the city is a little bit different from its neighbors in that it's small, easy to work in and get around and has a unique creative culture. From its history of craftsmanship during the Industrial Revolution to its underground noise rock scene, the scene is built on a legacy, the city is built on a legacy of artistic experimentation. This picture shows a nearby art center called the Steel Yard, a non-traditional craft school and RISD's frequent collaborator for community events. The city is also surrounded by beautiful nature and beaches. This is Tillinghast Farm, which is a RISD owned beach located 15 minutes away from campus by car. So that's where we live and work. Let's take a closer look at what's new at RISD. For starters, we welcome President Crystal Williams to campus in 2022. You can see her at center here in the blue hat. She is a poet, educator, and longstanding advocate for arts education and the power of inclusivity within it. The faculty you'll work with are architects, artists, designers, entrepreneurs, performers, researchers, and activists. They've won Guggenheim Fellowships and National Design Awards. They have a great deal of interdisciplinary expertise, but most are at home in the space between the disciplines, making unexpected connections and pushing for new knowledge. Their research informs the way that they teach. Like Anastasia Reyna, who teaches in the graphic design department, her research explores how emerging technologies push the boundaries of what it means to be human. This is some of her speculative work where she developed uh, with the students as a part of the RIS, at a, sorry, as a part of RISD's collaboration with Hyundai on the future of mobility. Assistant Professor in Experimental and Foundation Studies and alumnus Jordan Seabury received a law degree after attending RISD. In addition to being a painter and educator, he's an organizer, legislative advocate, and chair of the Providence Board of Canvassers in charge of running elections in the city. His work has been collected by a number of museums, including the RISD Museum and Crystal Bridges Museum. The way faculty engage with the wider world is reflected in the work students make as well, from the materials they use to the concepts behind their work. In an interview with Vogue magazine, recent graduate Vanessa Kiriboga, whose work you see here, said her mission in fashion is to raise consciousness about the life cycle of garments and how connected fashion is to nature from its original point of raw material to its de decomposition state. Students and faculty work together too. Eight students to one instructor is the typical class size at RISD, which sets a baseline for a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. But research projects take collaboration even further. 
For example, textiles professor Brooks Hagen and student researchers make up the virtual textiles research group who collaborate with computer scientists and use digital fabrication to push weaving in exciting new directions. Here's a 3D woven athletic shoe. And here's how it was made. On the left there is Emily Holtzman, who's a RISD Textiles alum and a member of this research group. She later translated her experience to the world of healthcare design. She co-created EmboNet, a knit medical device for heart surgeries, developed alongside biomedical engineers at Brown University. The images show the expandable surface of this advanced textile and how it works inside the body. Here's a closer look at how students work and what they're making while they're here at RISD. We're gonna run through all 16 departments in alphabetical order. Got apparel design. Architecture, which is an accredited program at RISD, a professional degree, takes five years. Ceramics. Film, animation, and video. This major is actually broken up into three tracks, live action, animation, and open media. Furniture design. Glass. Graphic design. Illustration of which many of my colleagues are graduates from this program, including Marin. Got industrial design, that's designing for industry. On the left here, you actually see the Space Design Club, which I mentioned earlier. Interior architecture, jewelry and metal smithing, painting, Photography. Printmaking. Sculpture. And last but not least, textiles. All right, so how do you prepare yourself for life after graduation? RISD Careers is a great resource. Counselors are available for support throughout all four years and after graduation. Their directory of over 600 plus grants, residencies, and fellowships for artists and designers is a great place to start looking for ways to gain outside experience that will help you plan for the future. Among those programs, we'll highlight two. The first is the Maharam Fellowship, open to any student once they've entered their sophomore year. Maharam Fellows participate in projects focused on advancing social progress and or safeguarding the environment. Recent graduate painting major Eli Kaufman returned to their hometown of Salt Lake City to co-produce a mural with members of Wasatch uh, Community Gardens Urban Farm, a unique garden location centered on providing job training for women experiencing homelessness. The other program we want to highlight is the Fulbright. Over 90 alumni are Fulbright recipients pursuing postgraduate research all over the world. Like 2015 architecture graduate Kim dupont Madanier, who went to Mongolia to understand how traditional Gur houses could inform green construction techniques. RISD has more Fulbright fellows than any other specialized school with over 110 alumni. In 2022 and 2023, they headed to Chile, Finland, Turkey, and the Philippines, among many other countries. Through RISD careers, you'll receive support to explore future internships and jobs after graduation. Opportunities on campus, like in-person portfolio reviews, connect students directly to companies and organizations. Here's a list of major, major organizations who have recently hired RISD graduates. Students go on to become designers, painters, architects, furniture makers, teachers, entrepreneurs, and more. Some work for large companies like graphic design alum Hee Jai Kim, who worked as a designer at agency Sagmeister and Walsh and is now a freelance designer at Apple Music. You can see her work here. Some start their own businesses like film animation video alum Terrence Harden. 
He founded a game publishing company called T-Boys Table Games in 2019 and has found a large following with Pocket Squares or Pocket Spades, his, innovate, in his, his innovative version of the classic Spades card game. Many are working artists. Here's a recent show by furniture alum Misha Khan. A lot of his current work is first designed in VR and then translated to life through digital fabrication. His work is a great example of how gra often grads combine fine art and design in their work. Photography alum Acacia Johnson has spent much of her career capturing the lives of people living in areas of the Arctic most affected by climate change. Her photo essay on Baffin Island was featured in the National Geographic. Whatever you go on to do after RISD, you'll be the kind of creative thinker the world needs right now. So let's talk about how to start your application. You'll need to fill out a common application, send one to three letters of recommendation, include school transcripts, and if English is your second language, submit language test scores from TOEFL, Yelts, or Duolingo. SAT and ACT scores are optional. Again, since all first-year students began their RISD education in the Experimental and Foundation Studies program, also known as EFS, you won't be applying directly to a major. This means your work shouldn't be restricted to one interest or one medium. It's a good idea to consider general values that we hold near, like experimentation, process, conceptual thought, creative problem solving, and technical skills. If you're curious about experiencing RISD before you apply, you should check out RISD's pre-collegiate programs. And for accepted first-generation students, we offer an intensive two-week pre-orientation program focused on building community with peers, staff, and faculty while providing an introduction to the many resources available to you on campus. Here are our application deadlines for first year and transfer applicants. Of course, early decision has passed already. Our regular decision deadline is January 16th, so still plenty of time to work on that portfolio and that application as well. And our transfer deadline is March 15th. Um, as of right now, we only have a fall entry for transfer students. Financial aid deadlines follow the same schedule. They're roughly 10 days after the application deadline. So if you already applied early decision, you still have a little bit of time to fill out both the FAFSA and the RISD institutional financial aid form. And regular decision is February 15th and transfer is March 25th. All right, that concludes our presentation for today. I'm going to open it up for questions and stop my share. Amazing. That was fantastic and so informative. And we have um, some some great questions. Um, first question, and by the way, also, if anybody has questions, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A chat box. We certainly have time to answer them. Um, one question we had was about um, the summer program for high school students, which you did touch on, Emily. And I do want to make sure before I forget to uh, promote tomorrow evening, we will have um, a RISD 101 that is specific to the uh, to RISD pre-college. So if you're interested in learning more, please register for that. That is from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and if you can't make it, we'll record it. So just know that as well. Um, but yes, uh, pre-college is uh, something we offer and um, certainly gives a great glimpse into what it's like at RISD. Um, and certainly can help you potentially, um, you know, strengthen your portfolio. It's pre-college programs are never required, but uh, but it could be a great opportunity. Um, could you speak to? We did have a question regarding. Um, let's see, specific to the application. Um, what are your thoughts on like SAT and ACT um, being a requirement or not? Or or including it, excuse me. Yeah, what I always say is if your test scores, if they bring you joy, include them. If your test scores don't bring you any joy, don't include them. They're just one element of the application. They're a way for us to understand a piece of who you are as a person, but really um, the portfolio is gonna rise to the top of the most important things in your application every time. So really just include your test scores if you're proud of them. And um, they truly are optional. So we won't, there's no harm in not including them as well. Yes, the portfolio, um, 
there was a question about the portfolio requirement, and that is uh, a big requirement. Um, certainly not the only requirement, but uh, definitely uh, a big part of the application. Um, speaking of the portfolio, and you did touch on it in the presentation, but can you speak more to um, what kind of what we're looking for in the portfolio and what we're what we want to see in the application overall? Yes, definitely. So as far as the portfolio goes, um, we don't have any specific requirements or um, assignments beyond our minimum and maximum requirements. So we're looking for 12 to 20 examples of work that show us your point of view, um, how you think, how you work, uh, what type of work you enjoy doing, all of those things. Really, we want to see your experimentation and your ability to work across a few different mediums if that's part of your process and part of your practice. It's good to see some technical skill in some sort of medium, if possible, um, because that shows us that you've worked hard to hone in on a certain area of skill. Um, one thing that we do highly recommend in a portfolio is some observational drawing. So that, of course, is drawing from what's in real life, from what's directly in front of you. And it doesn't have to be photorealistic. Really, we just want to see that you're able to work in the moment based on things that are in real life, because you do end up spending a lot of your first year and also the rest of your time at RISD and as an artist doing observational drawing. So it's a good skill to see in a portfolio. And beyond that, um, like we touched on in the presentation, at RISD, you're not applying directly to a department when you apply to RISD. You can think about it as applying to the foundation year in some respects. So just show us that you have uh, the skills to succeed in a foundation year and beyond. And I think that'll, that'll make for a strong portfolio. If you're looking for some feedback on your portfolio, portfolio, I highly recommend attending a portfolio review. And we offer a few opportunities for that. Um, the first that I'll point to are our RISD hosted online portfolio reviews. So you sign up for a 15 minute session um, that is over Zoom. And we have two dates coming up, November 16th and November 28th. And a RISD alumni or a RISD admissions officer like Marin or myself will give you feedback on your portfolio. And we also come to a few different cities across the country during the year. So um, like I mentioned at the very beginning, I'm actually headed to San Francisco next week for the Portfolio Review Day on November 19th. And hope to see you San Francisco people there. But there might be one coming to a city nearby you as well. And as far as application go, I know this is kind of a long-winded answer um, to this question, um, but what we're looking for in an application as a whole, of course, we're looking for all of these things that I talked about in the portfolio, but we also want to see that you um, can flourish in an academic setting because that is what RISD is. So it's good to see that you've grown throughout high school, that you've taken classes that challenge you. Um, it's good to see those qualities that you hear about all the time, which are resilience and self-advocacy and problem solving and all of these things um, in different areas of your application, whether that be in your college essay, in the optional writing supplement, in um, the letters of recommendation that your, um, your mentors write for you. We really just want to see that you will be, um, you have potential to succeed and flourish here at RISD. And that can look like a lot of different things. So be true to yourself and how you work and um, that'll be reflected in your application. Absolutely. Is there anything you wanted to add, Marin? I mean, that was wonderful. I was just, I think it was a great segue though into a question we had that was just like, what kind of student succeeds at RISD? I think that's a really great question and um, and kind of stems from what you're talking about when we're, what we're looking for in the application and the portfolio uh, what you've already said about like, um, of course, that we're trying to get to know you as applicants and the fact that you're applying to, you know, that first year at RISD. But would you want to expand on even aside from the specifics of, of the things to keep in mind when you're a first year applicant? I think we, we also have some transfer uh, mm -hmm. some students interested in transferring too. So we can, let's, let's make sure to touch on, on that as well. But what, what do you think is a good, like, um, yeah, what, how, what would you like to speak to about a, a successful RISD student, which by the way is, you know, there's many different ways to be. Yes. I was going to say there's a lot of diversity in terms of what a successful RISD student looks like. I think the, the things that I'll point towards are, um, the things that I just mentioned, which are, um, 
you know, ability to problem solve and be resilient. And I would also add to that an ability to be an active participant in, in one's community, um, to really enjoy the process of critique and the process of creation and revision and um, all of these different things that make up what it is to be an artist and a designer. I think students who really invest in their education through building relationships with their peers and their faculty um, also make for successful RISD students um, because a huge part of coming to a school like RISD is being able to make connections with people. Um, it's a huge piece of it. And so I, I would speak to those elements. And I think it really also depends on what department you're in because things are totally dependent upon um, how you want to work and what type of work you want to create and what your goals are long term. Um, but I would really say that RISD students are, are tend to be pretty um, bold in a lot of different ways and able to kind of take on challenges and and create create beautiful things and create interesting things. Um, that's I guess that's what I'd say. Marin, what do you think made you successful as a RISD student? I mean, I think certainly RISD helped me to open my eyes and my approach to things. Um, I mean, I always, I specifically, of course, at the start of it being experimental and foundation studies, um, we called it just, I think, foundation studies back then. It's, it sounds cooler now, but basically <laughs> it's a lot, I mean, a lot of even just as an example, expanding the way that I worked size-wise, like I know that before I came to RISD, um, the, my process of work was very meticulous and, um, more it was just like a, the mark making more precise and that's sometimes I like to return to that too but the, when I came to Rizzi I expanded the way that I worked there's more movement involved just working on a larger scale but also Rizzi you know just you're learning from everybody around you and so the openness to try new things to experiment to really think outside the box and you just learn how to approach things from many different ways so I think a successful RISD student as well, to add to what you were saying, Emily, is somebody who's, you know, anyone who's really willing and excited to um, explore and experiment and just um, open themselves up and, and uh, embrace all new ideas and approaches. Certainly, yes. And I just wanted to go, before we jump into the next question, you mentioned mm -hmm. transfer students, and I just want yes, to talk yes. about transfer students really quickly. Thank um, you. So we love our transfer students here at RISD. The transfer application process is a little bit different than the first year application process. So transfer students with a minimum of 27 college credits um, can apply to RISD transfer, and it is a separate application. It's not the common application, it's the RISD application. And in this case, you actually do apply directly to a department. So keep that in mind as a transfer student, you do want your portfolio to reflect the department that you're applying for. And um, our uh, acceptance process for transfer is dependent on space. So um, depending on what department you apply for, they'll determine if they have space for transfer students and then we'll move forward with the process there. So just wanna put that on your radar. Um, if you're a prospective transfer student. And we also have transfer specific webinars that um, I highly encourage you to check out um, that I'll dive a little deeper into the nuances of the transfer application as a whole. Absolutely. We'll post again, the RISD um, YouTube uh, link that was posted earlier, um, but that'll have recordings, including we we are we do these application prep um, series, but some of you may already be aware. Um, so certainly look at those recordings. We have another one coming up next week that talks about the life cycle of a RISD application. But for transfers, um, on that note, application two is the walks through the transfer application. Um, application prep one, the first year application. So, so please definitely take a look at those um, recordings. And I would say for transfers as well, as Emily mentioned, you're applying to a particular department. So I highly encourage anyone interested in RISD, but transfers particularly, take a look at the, um, the department pages on RISD.edu because um, you can learn about each one. Do your homework, learn, learn about what each major uh, entails. You know, there's what, there's a curriculum breakdown on each department page. You can see course descriptions. You can learn about faculty, see some student work. Um, but uh, also know, yeah, that that you know, students who are interested in a, uh, our first year program, 
Um, you're of course welcome to, to learn about our different majors that way as well. Uh, I also wanna say, cause specific to the transfer question that most of our transfers do enter RISD as sophomores, fall semester sophomores. Um, and most of them still also go through that EFS program, but a condensed version, it's a summer EFS. Um, but there's, uh, if you have, um, you know, at least 60 college credits, you could potentially, once you're here, you can request to be considered for advanced standing. So, um, again, that's, you know, we're talking to your department head and maybe you would move forward a bit, but we, again, please take a look at past, um, webinars that we have and feel free to let us know if you have any specific questions about the transfer application. Um, you know, I would love to also to talk about any study abroad. Do we have those opportunities? Speaking of expanding our horizons. <laughs> yes, we sure do. We have a lot of study abroad opportunities. So um, here at RISD, we call it RISD Global, and there are a number of different ways to do study abroad at RISD. Um, the three main ones that I'll point to are over summer, over a semester, and over winter session. So winter session is five weeks, I believe. Is that correct, Mary? Mm -hmm. Five weeks? Yep. Five weeks in between fall and spring semesters, and it's like a mini semester. Um, in your first year, that's your opportunity to take different classes in different departments and try out what you might want to major in. And um, in your sophomore, junior, senior, or fifth year, if you're an architecture major, um, the winter session is kind of whatever you want it to be. And so for some people, they end up going abroad for winter session. So that's totally an option. There's also a number of summer programs where you kind of do an immersive experience in a number of locations across the world. Um, they're very interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. Um, one of our uh, campus tour guides, Dominic, went, I forget exactly where he went. I believe it was somewhere in Mexico. And he was integrated into the community and worked really extensively um, to design and um, create art experiences for their community. And the, uh, the third experience is over a semester. So we do partnered study abroad with um, four institutions, uh, one in London, two in Rome, and one in Scandinavia, I believe. Does that sound correct to you, Maren? Um, we can... That's Yes, but also <laughs> don't quote me on that, but I would quote you. But at the same time, if you don't want to quote either of us, I did just, I did drop the Rizzi Global link in the chat box. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you can, you can quote the website. There's a lot of cool stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And those are, those are semester long programs. So of course, RISD education is very specialized and specific. And so um, these are schools that we've guaranteed that their programs are comparable to RISD programs. And so that's how you can kind of um, fit that piece in. And I, I know one student who did the University of Arts London um, semester abroad and loved it. So we definitely have study abroad experiences. Um, can you talk a little bit about the campus life um, and living on campus at RISD, whether, you know, from what that's like um, to, to, this, to the requirements for living on campus? Totally. Yeah. Huge piece of college life is <laughs> where do you live? Um, so we uh, here at RISD, you live on campus your first two years and then it's up to you in your, your last few years, whether you want to live on campus or off campus. And our first year residence halls, we have four and they're great. They're really new and, and a lot of um, so many great resources. There's a, a studio on the first floor of all four of the first year residence halls, which is really cool if you're a night owl and you don't want to leave, you know, your dorm building in the middle of the night to go paint. You can just do it in the studio that's on the, the bottom floor. And um, our upperclassmen housing, a lot of them are in kind of old houses that are renovated and kind of create a, a more close-knit community. So there's a lot of different ways to do housing at RISD. Um, we also have a fantastic Office of Disability Services. So they work with students to provide accommodations, um, whether that be in residence life or in academics or in um, even dining. Speaking of dining, we have uh, a number of different dining options on campus. Our biggest and best is the Met, which is um, uh, kind of, it's a buffet style dining hall, really good food, like better than most colleges, I would say. 
And um, first years are on the meal plan as a part of their, their housing requirements. So I really recommend checking out, Marin dropped a link to the Residence Life um, webpage in the chat. If you go on the webpage, there's actually YouTube videos that give you a tour of a bunch of the different residence halls. And we'll also give you resources if you're planning long term and want to move off campus in your junior year. There's also resources surrounding that as well. Okay. Anything to add, Marin? Since you you lived you lived here at RISD. Um, I loved living here at RISD, and I lived on campus my entire four years. Um, I actually lived in the quad three of the four years because I was an RA. Um, and I love that so very much. But I I I loved living on campus. The community is fantastic. Um, there's great housing nearby and and so it's not a long trek if you decide to live off campus after your sophomore year. But the community, you know, res life is fantastic. And I, I just love the the neighborly, you know, um community feel. So it's it's fantastic. Totally. Yeah. Providence is a great place to live. It's very walkable. It yeah. Transitable. <laughs> you yeah. can get around. Yeah. I, I know that's my favorite a thing about it. One of my favorite things about it, but just like it's there's a, it's so unique and creative and it's easy to get around and uh it's near some other cool cities too. It's just a cool place. Yeah. Um let's see. So, okay, oh, there's a question about um you know, there's the different departments are different sizes. Uh, can you speak to freshmen declaring their major? Are they are they applying again? Are they guaranteed a spot? Um, yeah, speak totally. to that and the different department sizes and I mean in that regard. Yes, yeah, so um, we really believe in the experimental and foundation studies year at RISD. So like we said before, you don't apply directly to a major when you apply to RISD. And then by your sophomore year, usually at the end of your first year, is when you declare a major in one of 16 departments. You are guaranteed a spot in any of those departments in your first year. Um, so you don't have to apply um, to the major themselves, the major itself. And um, so, for instance, if you applied for illustration and there wasn't any more room, you wouldn't be rejected because they would create room for you, basically. Um, that's a little bit different if you're a transfer student. So if you're a transfer student, it is space dependent. So that's kind of the difference between um, transfer and first year. Um, and then a couple other like little nuances to uh, declaring a major. We do allow for a double major, although it's not super common. Um, usually it might take a little extra time. So just note that if, if you're really interested in double majoring. And the other thing to note is that you can change your major um, if, if you choose to along the course of your time at RISD. And in that case, you are not guaranteed a spot in the major that you would be transfer or you know changing into. So just keep that in mind. Um, but the way that you go about finding a major, I think that's kind of scary for a lot of people is how do I pick one major to do for the, you know, my whole time at RISD. Um, that's really what we believe in for the foundation year. And you have winter session to take classes in different electives um, that can help inform your decision. You'll have sophomore TAs in your EFS studios who will give you so much good insight on what first year was like for them and how they landed in their major. And um, another thing to note is that, oh, what was I going to say? I lost it, Marin. <laughs> it was so important that I lost it. But it'll come back to you. And also uh, everything you've said already is already so wonderful. There you go. <laughs> if it exactly. comes back to you when it does. Yeah. Feel free to just shout it out. Um, but no, you said I, I was going to, let's see, let me look at other questions we have that um so oh, this is a back to being about the application does Rizzy accept ap or ib credits we do yes yes <laughs> <laughs> so we accept those credits as a part of the application process mm -hmm. but um it's not guaranteed that those credits will um i know some people want to transfer out of introduction courses when they get to RISD and that's um up to our uh, our liberal arts dean and our experimental and foundation studies dean so um we do take ap and ib credits when it comes to your application but it's a little bit of a different 
ball game when you get into RISD. Right. And when it, um, we certainly, you know, again, just to echo what you were saying, Emily, and, and just um, in general, when it comes to the application, we review everything holistically. So when it comes to your transcript, we're going to take a look at what um, your academic performance, and please know we're not looking for, you know, straight A's, perfect grades. We love seeing improvement. Um, you know, just, we just want to see too, that you're not only paying attention and um, to your art classes that, you know, that liberal arts and your art classes influence each other. And, but again, um, we also keep in mind if you're taking AP classes, honor classes, um, IB courses, we, we factor that into our assessment. Um, and yes, as Emily was saying, you can potentially transfer some over as first years. Uh, and with transfers, you could transfer over more credits, but again, it's of course, dependent on what the Dean of Liberal Arts and your studio department head decides. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to make sure. Um, so many great questions. And I wanted to make sure that I'm choosing some that we maybe haven't touched on. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay, so I think we can, it's a good question going back to, um, oh, I did want to touch on this. I was in the middle of typing something, but to, I also wanted to touch on the fact that, because uh, it does kind of segue into what, what I was about to ask you, and then also what I, what I was about to say about our transcripts is like, I do want to point out we don't have any prerequisites. So really, if when it comes to transcripts, you don't have any, like, we're not looking um, for you to have taken any certain amount of classes or certain types of classes, as long as you're fulfilling your graduation requirements. And that also goes for art classes. Like certainly we know that a lot of our applicants have various resources. Some of them have um, great art departments in school. Some of them, you just, some, you all have different resources and availabilities regarding art classes. So back to about uh, pre-college as well, that's also not required. Um, but you know, certainly if there are any classes that you could take that could help strengthen your foundational skills and certainly taking upon yourself to, to, to experiment and, um, and try new things. Um, but I would also want to, uh, segue into experimentation in the works we include in the portfolio. Cause so could you speak a little bit more to that, Emily, um, speaking to the amount of finished work that should be in there as well as process pieces, just, I mean, a great question to, to reiterate. Yes. So I really encourage all applicants to think about your own personal practice and what role experimentation and process play in that. For some people, process is really integral to how they think about their work. And so I, in that case, I would really encourage you to uh, include process in one or two of your pieces. So pick you know, one or two of your pieces out of your portfolio that you feel like process was really important and give us an extra slide that shows, you know, an in-progress photo of you making the piece or um, the initial sketch, or um, let's see how you went about installing the piece in the real world, things like that. Um, we, I recommend no more than three images per slide. And I also recommend um, no need to show us like a reference photograph if you're just painting, you know, the same reference photograph. Um, but good to see process. So if you have some in progress work, you're welcome to include that in your portfolio. If you feel like it, it shows like a good, um, if it gives us insight into your your process and your in your practice. Um, and as far as experimentation goes, um, I do recommend experimenting because that's how you challenge yourself as an artist and designer and and kind of really understand why why you do things, not just how you do things. So it is great for us to see in your portfolio that you've tried a new medium. Um, that you've questioned why you use a particular medium, that you have um, experimented with dif different types of mark making or image making. These things are just important for us to see um, because it shows the skills that we talked about earlier, the, the qualities of like um, being able to problem solve and challenge yourself and all these different things. So um, it's kind of a vague answer because we don't have like an X, Y, Z requirement for the portfolio, but really I just encourage you to reflect upon, um, yeah, how, what role does your, you know, non-finished work play in your, in your portfolio? 
And with that being said, we do want to see mostly finished work. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and just adding to that, I would say just, of course, being mindful about any pieces you decide to include, you know, having fun with it, certainly in the creative process and then choosing pieces that really best represent you. And, and there doesn't need to be a theme or anything like that. Just choosing the strongest work that really showcases your personality and your ideas and your technical skills that you've done within the last couple of years, but also being discerning about what you decide to curate, you know, in your, as your portfolio, when it comes to process pieces, just pieces that really showcase your critical thinking and critical making skills. Exactly what Emily was just saying. Um, I want to be mindful of time. We just have a couple more minutes. So um, uh, we did have ooh, so a few more questions just pop up. Um, when it comes to the portfolio too, I'll just quickly answer as well. Someone asked about a written aspect. No, there isn't a written aspect as a part of the portfolio, though you can put like brief descriptions on, in the description section of slide room, which is to the right of the slide. Um, but there, if I would encourage you all to consider the college essays as like a the written portion and also, you know, treating that as another way to show us your personality and who you are. And uh, we're just looking to get to know you best. Um, I would say for the final question, and there have been great ones, but Emily, this is a final question for today. Um, what makes RISD unique? That's a, a great question. I I can speak to a number of different things and I'll, I'll do my best to answer that. Mm -hmm. I think um, the kind of, you know, cheesy but true answer is that what makes RISD unique is the people. We have a really fantastic community of makers and thinkers and um, really creative people who are so thrilled to be here in this environment and um, really carry that ethos on throughout their the rest of their life and the rest of their career. So I think the people make RISD what it is. And um, that's facilitated by RISD as an institution's emphasis on um, collaboration and critical thinking and including the liberal arts in a studio practice and um, constructive critique and um, being involved in one's community, practices of sustainability and um, advocating for diversity, equity, inclusion, all of these things, um, I think are, they're integral to RISD as an institution and, and kind of seep in through all the different ways that people interact with each other here. And one more thing I'll say about what makes RISD unique is that we also have a really great balance of art and design. <laughs> um, after all of that big, you know, stuff about what it means to be in a community here. I would also say we just have a lot of really interesting people who are thinking a lot of different ways and we encourage that and we we try to facilitate that as much as we can. Marin, what would your answer to that question be? Oh my gosh. I mean said it already. You basically you said it <laughs> so beautifully already. But I just to to echo that and just as truly what makes Rizzi unique is is absolutely the community. Um, you're learning from everyone around you. You learn how to think differently and and how to just approach things in different ways. So, uh, with at the risk of 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 essentially um, going on and on, because believe me, I could. I will. I will let it. I, I will just say that essentially what you said, Emily, was just so. Um, I echo that, and it's just a really unique creative community. You'll if you get a chance to visit um, campus, um, please please definitely visit. You can learn how to do so on our website through registering for campus tour, but there's certainly creative energy on campus that is um, unmatched. It's There's a buzz of creative energy that I just absolutely adore. And uh, it's a really cool place. So I want to, I do want to be very mindful of everyone's time. Uh, and I want to thank you so much, Emily. That was a wonderful presentation. And thank you all for your interest. And I did put in the chat box admissions.atrisd.edu if you have any further questions, but also visit our website to see upcoming info sessions that you can register for. Um, and thank you all very much for your interest and have a wonderful night, day, evening, morning, everything. <laughs> all that. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.